I don't know. Are any of us? I was able to focus on the memorial, but now that's over. And I'm just left... Lost. How do we get here? From a harmless scientific anomaly to being hunted? What do we do? I can try. I guess that's all any of us can do. But it's gonna be hard. At least for now. You mean what could be the biggest discovery in the history of humanity? Yeah, I've got some thoughts. Scans are still inconclusive, but I think we've seen enough to know that we're dealing with something potentially even more unusual than the artifacts. There are so many questions beyond just who are they? How did they find you? How do they know about the artifacts? Why has no one ever seen them before? They did openly threaten you, as I understand it. I'd say that's something to worry about. It was one thing when this was just about us investigating the artifacts. Uh, a weird phenomenon that didn't come with creepy threats or questions about aliens or whatever it is that's going on now. I know we'll figure it all out in the end. It's just kind of a lot right now. Stay safe, okay? I'd like to talk to you about something, when you have the chance. Oh, right. I was afraid you were going to bring that up again. Very well, let's see if I embarrass myself or not. My colleagues, I venture out into the darkness of space once again. Many of you have expressed concern. At my age, you say? Surely the risks are too great. Surely Sebastian Banks has earned a rest. Nonsense, I say. To go out into the unknown, to brave the possibility of never coming back, to ignite the spark of hope that humanity will find answers out there in the stars, that is all I have ever wanted. If this last expedition is my time, then I say, I have been fortunate. I have been fortunate to leave surrounded by people who could not be more different from one another, but who share a common purpose. That, dare I say, I am fortunate. My soul has a home it can always come back to. And that was the last thing Sebastian Banks ever said in the lodge before he disappeared. And Constellation has been waiting for him to come home ever since. It's hard not to feel some regret, even some blame. No one is individually responsible, but I am the one paying the bills. But at least now, we really know the stakes. What we might lose if we go forward, and I think we need to go forward. Agreed. We stop now, and they win. I'm not accustomed to losing. Constellation needs to see this through, no matter what. I want you to know I was very impressed with your work back on Neon. <laughs> There's no fooling you. Don't worry, this is a much lower stake opportunity. My Star Yard's been having a little trouble getting our next project off the ground. I need someone capable and decisive to step in and steer it in the right direction. Interested? Of course, now that I know you're interested. It's a new ship. We want to diversify our fleet. Now, I don't know why the people I pay very handsomely to come up with new designs can't seem to get out of the R&D phase. And frankly, I don't care. I just want someone 
you to go there and show them how it's done. I did not. Part of the problem is that my designers seem to be having trouble agreeing on a plan. I should mention that you're not there to make design decisions. You're there to get the project back on track and help guide them. So, ideally, you're not adding to the problem. R&D needs to happen first, whenever work starts on a new project. It's a natural stalling point since we need to make so many big decisions. In this case, we're talking about looking at our existing fleet of ships and using data we've gathered to see what consumers want. But of course, each member of the R&D team can interpret that data to suit their own confirmation bias. I'm guessing that's what we're seeing here. Excellent. I'll send word ahead to the project lead, Jules Degante, that you're taking point. They'll all be instructed to listen to you and follow your direction. I expect big things from you, so I'm excited to see what you manage to deliver. I don't believe you'll let me down. What his company has accomplished, and for good reason. I understand. I'm all for new technologies, but your average consumer doesn't need that sort of maneuvering capability. And Mike is saying there are technical reasons your design won't work. I'd rather be in a ship that can defend You're asking for technology that doesn't even exist, Frank. I'm good at what I do, but you're mental if you think I can pull off what you're asking. Tried and true is what we should focus on. Tried and true is so dull, though. I like Frank's design, but maybe we could pivot it to more of a research vessel? Something suited for deep space exploration. That's a great suggestion, but you know what? We haven't heard from Nev yet. Maybe she has some marketing insights. Okay, um, but... <sighs> what if... Sorry, H hear me out. <clears throat> what if we went for the family recreation demo instead? It's a much bigger market than explorers, and no one else is doing it. Oh, for... seriously? That's a little different than I think we were all expecting, but a really good point. I also worry that would limit us creatively. Hey, 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 back, back up. Nev's got a point. It's something we could easily build. And I'm sure the number crunchers could make it turn a tidy profit. Thank you. <laughs> but I do think a solid, no-frills ship with a large cargo capacity would be even more practical and doable, given our time frame. Good, everyone. We need to come together if we're to succeed. Let's change direction and do a little thought exercise. <sighs> Walter's consultant, friend, whatever they are, gets here. Oh, this must be Walter's consultant friend. Please, come. 
Come join us. We've been waiting for you. Hello. Hi there. You must be Walter's colleague. He informed me that you'd be taking charge of Project Kepler despite the fact that we have a fully dedicated R&D staff already assigned to it. But that's okay. I'm sure that even though you have virtually no experience with this, you'll do a great job. Oh. Uh, I just assumed. You know what? I'm really sorry. I should trust Walter knew what he was doing. My bad. Even so, we have plenty of designers. As you probably know, we're tasked with coming up with Strout Eklund's next hit starship. But we have budget concerns, market research to finish, and we can't seem to agree on a design. So I guess Walter sent you to resolve these issues. Have at it. Ah, right, so you mentioned. Let's move on to solving our budget issues then, shall we? We were charged with building the newest, hottest ship on the market, which won't be possible unless we petition the board for more money. So we have two new budget proposals. One will allow us to build what I consider to be a very sensible ship, but we'll have to make some tough design cuts. The other will allow us much more flexibility to put whatever we want into the ship. It's what I call the kitchen sink proposal. I don't love it, but it'll be next to impossible to approve. What should we go with? While it's true we'd be able to afford to put anything and everything into that design, it's just not practical, and the board will put more pressure on us to see that it succeeds. I worry that without constraints, my team will be disincentivized to focus this ship in any given direction, and they'll try to cram in everything but the kitchen sink, hence the name. Who knows what kind of monstrosity we'd create if we tried to incorporate all of our designs? And would something that expensive actually sell? It's more that we can only choose certain design elements at the expense of others. In other words, if we go with something in Mike's design, there's not enough money in the budget for what Ella wants. That's one of the reasons we haven't been able to agree on anything. I was afraid you'd say that. Look, I'm the one who has to go to the board with this proposal, so before I can convince them this is going to be worth it, you're going to need to convince me. Well, I'm all ears, because it's going to take a miracle to convince them. A smart leader knows when some ideas just aren't worth pursuing. It's true. That kind of budget could set us up to be industry leaders with a brand new type of ship. Maybe. I won't rule it out. Okay, I think you made some good points. I'll go to the board with the kitchen sink proposal and get that approved. Well, Jules, it seems you have your work cut out for you. Great! That's one problem solved. I'll go forward with that budget proposal and we can move on. Next, we need to gather some market data. The best way to do this is to outfit your ship with some sensors and take it through some real-world scenarios so we can make more informed design decisions. Great! Just pick up a mission or two at the mission board and proceed like you normally would. We'll collect the data when you return. If you take on a variety of missions, we can build a ship to handle a variety of scenarios. But if you just fly one mission, we can build a more focused ship. It's up to you. In the meantime, you might also want to talk with the team, get to know them, give feedback on their proposals, etc. Good luck out there.
Hello. I'm proud to be a part of the Strata. We were talking about underserved consumers in the market. Do you want to take a guess which kind of pilots I have in mind for the ship? Huh. No, but interesting. I've never considered that. I should add that idea to my backlog. My idea is a little less... conventional. I believe we should invest in making a dedicated exploration ship, marketed towards citizen scientists. Sure, we and other manufacturers have lines of exploration ships, but none built with the average consumer in mind. It's my hope that we can jumpstart a new era of affordable, accessible space exploration, fueled by ordinary people like you and me. Thanks. Let me tell you. We would not regret going with my idea. This is a chance to do something that will truly inspire future generations. Bye. I'm wondering if we need another chef in the kitchen. Then again, I hear Walter brought you in to finally make a decision around here. Good. Just so long as you don't push us to make anything too nutty. I think your decisiveness will put us back on the right track. Speaking of which, I think my plan will get us where we need to be as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's simple, no frills, and most importantly, won't cause me any major headaches on the engineering side. <laughs> of course you do, because you've been in my shoes and you know it's the only sensible way to go with a project like this. So I'm thinking, there's loads of fighters. No sense in mucking about with that again. And we've already got one of the best luxury liners in the biz. What I figure is, the cargo running business is booming, and no one's quite built a personal craft like that to serve the working class folk. Nothing fancy, no frills. Just a simple, sturdy, inexpensive ship with cargo room up the wazoo and make it so easy my cousin's little moppet could fly it. Wait, really? I was expecting we'd have to argue a bit more than that. <laughs> well, that's a relief. I hope you're being sincere. Because if I can convince them to go with mine, it'd save us all a lot of trouble in the end. I hope we didn't scare you off, huh? Um, hi. <laughs> Need something? Oh, you really want to hear my ideas? I mean, I have an idea, but it's not that great. I'm not even a designer or anything. So, I was thinking that we could really use a recreational craft in our fleet. But not like super luxurious like our Adonis pleasure yacht, something marketed more towards families. Something mom and dad could pack up and take the kids on vacation. <laughs> You probably think that's stupid, right? Well, you listened to my idea more than the others did, so I'll take it as a good sign. Thanks. Um, take care, okay? You know, I have designed spacecraft for over 10 years. So, you must have really impressed Walter for him to give you this project. Or maybe it's a bit of nepotism. Never mind that. <laughs> Perhaps he sees in you what he sees in me. Ah, yes. At least you may be more open to my ideas than my colleagues. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Imagine a luxury craft designed for the most discerning of tastes. Every feature designed for comfort, in peace of mind, high-end performance, Precision engineering, a spacecraft for those who wish to be seen. This will be the most elite personal craft on the market. <sighs> I'm glad you agree. Such an ostentatious luxury craft will be the envy of everyone in the settled systems. 
Yeah, yeah. See you. I'd like... Well, we're making progress now, I guess. Oh, yes, I actually do have a proposal. I wasn't really expecting you to give me feedback, but why not, I guess? I'd like to see us branch out a bit more in the Starfighter market. Bounty hunting and mercenary work are both big these days, especially among the hard-blooded free stars. Wonderful! Thank you! I'm hoping when the time comes, I'll be able to convince the others that's what we should go with. Versatility may not be what certain customers are looking for. So you managed to complete a couple different missions. This will give us lots of data to support building a ship that can tackle a variety of scenarios. Of course, if we build a ship like that, we may need the kitchen sink budget, but we'll see. Thanks for your help. Now we just need to solve our interpersonal issues so we can agree on a design. Easy, right? <laughs> You seem awfully confident for someone who doesn't know how long we've been dealing with this. I've tried everything I can think of besides some sort of hokey team building exercise. So, what do you think you can do differently? Hmm. I can't believe I didn't think of that. It's fair. Everyone goes around the table and makes a cut. That way no one feels like they're the only one being asked to compromise. This should drive us towards a more focused design. And since Walter asked you to take the lead on this, I don't have to be the villain here. So you're sure about this? Great! Let's get ready to disappoint everyone equally! I thought it was obvious. Until now, that's how it's gone, but no one's relenting. Wait, you didn't mean actual physical fighting, right? Nah. <sighs> well, here goes nothing. Okay, everyone. Our friend here, remember, not me, has decided in order to move forward, we're going to go around the table and everyone is going to give up one major aspect of your design. It's the fairest way to do this, and ultimately, I think it's going to make our collective design choices a lot easier. Who wants to start? <coughs> okay, fine. I'll go first. I'm willing to cut some of the included hard points. It'll mean less firepower, but the consumer can still add them afterwards, I suppose. Uh, you're looking at me, huh? I guess that means you want me to go. Oh, look, I'll be easy. You know I wasn't looking for anything fancy, but if I've got to make cuts, uh, we can reduce some of the cargo base. Uh... I guess we can cut some of the extra sensors and data collection equipment. As long as this thing can still make it to deep space and back with no problem, I'll be happy. Um, I'd be willing to give up some of the passenger space, maybe? Yeah, that should be okay. Frank? Mm, okay, fine, you win. I'll cut out some of the luxury designs and features. All that gold trim was going to be tacky anyway. Well then, that wasn't so bad. I feel much more confident we can actually build this thing. We're all super glad you're here, right, everyone? Based on the decisions you made, well, I'm not quite sure what kind of ship we're going to end up with, but it should be capable in a variety of situations. It sure will have a lot of... stuff to it. Now that we've addressed all our issues, we can move forward, finalize the design, and get this into production pretty quickly. If you could do us a favor and let Walter know that we're back on track, I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Thanks for your help. Someday. Oh, my. At this point, I don't care what you have. Good to hear. I figured as much. See, I just finished looking over the final design they sent over before you arrived. I've got to say, it's certainly interesting. They managed to cram just about everything they could into it. Honestly, I don't think it ever occurred to me to do something like that. I'll be honest with you. This is the most expensive ship we've ever made. But I'm confident we can set a price point to make it work. 
I'll be happy to make it my new personal ship. Additionally, I want you to have one of the first off the assembly line for all of your hard work. Feel free to pick it up at the Star Yard. Thanks again. do for you, boss. What's happening, darling? I've already packed my bag for Cora and Mom's big vacation sleepover. 